Thank you, Chair Sanders. I also thank our staff who've worked really hard uh, to, to get these, this legislative vehicle together. I just acknowledge them. As ranking member of the committee, getting reauthorizations done on time in a bipartisan manner should be a top priority, and today's markup is an important step in accomplishing this goal. I think Chair Sanders, who's noted his commitment to finishing reauthorizations in a timely manner with support from both Democrats and Republicans. And I look forward to more bipartisan reauthorization markups soon. Thanks to the rest of the committee, you guys all. We don't always agree, but it's our responsibility to put politics aside uh, to make sure that important programs are properly evaluated and improved to benefit our fellow Americans. Today, we're considering several expiring reauthorizations related to public health that enhance treatment and research of serious diseases. Specifically, Senators Susan Collins and Mark Warner's uh, NAPA Reauthorization Act extends the National Alzheimer's Project to 2035, supporting a strategic national plan to combat Alzheimer's and related dementias. We're also marking up Senator Collins and Ed Markey's Alzheimer's Accountability and Investment Act, requiring NIH scientists to submit an annual Alzheimer's budget, research budget, directly to Congress. Senator Collins is busy. We're also addressing Senators Collins and Dick Durbin supporting and improving rural EMS needs reauthorization, and I love this acronym, the SIREN Act, which ensures that rural EMS agencies are properly staffed and have the equipment they need to provide critical emergency care to Americans living in rural, underserved areas. We're considering Senators Tim Scott and Cory Booker's sickle cell disease and other, herit and other heritable blood disorders, Research, Surveillance, Prevention, and Treatment Act of 2023, expanding the number of clinicians who can treat sickle cell and improving coordination with other providers. As a, as a physician who worked in a public hospital system for over 20 years, I can personally attest to the devastation that sickle cell can bring at an early age to those who are afflicted. Um, uh, just making sure that we're fully employed, Senator Collins is working with Jean Shaheen, Senator Shaheen, for a Special Diabetes Program Reauthorization Act of 2023, providing mandatory funding for the Special Diabetes Program and the Special Diabetes Program for Indians, $170 million for each program in fiscal years 2024 and 25. We mark up Senator Tammy Baldwin and Mark Wayne Mullins' animal drug, um, animal drug and animal generic user fee amendments of 2023, ensuring that vets, veterinarians, farmers, and ranchers have access to new medicines to keep families and animals healthy and protect against outbreaks of disease. I want to highlight Senator Roger Marshall's policy on zootechnical zoo food substances, which will be offered as an amendment today. This would streamline FDA's review of a new category of products that help farmers and ranchers make their operations safer and more efficient, including products to reduce the risk of foodborne pathogens like salmonella and E. coli and increase production of milk, eggs, and meat. And as a physician, I would say these products are analogous to the nutritional supplements such as folate and easily absorbed iron for women who are pregnant. The policy gives the FDA similar flexibility for animal products that it has for supplements for humans. I thank Senators Collins, Marshall, Mullen, Tim Scott, Warner, Markey, Durbin, Booker, Baldwin, and Shaheen who have spearheaded these bipartisan pieces of legislation. These reauthorizations are crucial to improve health care for Americans and for animals, which ultimately is for um, Americans. Ensuring that these and all reauthorizations are passed and signed into law before September 30th requires the full commitment of every member of this committee and continued leadership from our chair. And our work is cut out. But this markup shows that both sides of the aisle are committed to working together to get these reauthorizations completed. And today's bipartisan effort should be a model for how this committee functions going forward. And I hate to end on a downer note, though. But it appears, unfortunately, that a bipartisan effort going forward will not always be the case. Yesterday, the chair announced that next week, this committee will depart from its long tradition of bipartisanship to hold its first partisan markup since the Affordable Care Act of 2009. For what? For controversial legislation that will not pass Congress, 
uh, 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 will not pass the Senate. Uh, for almost a decade and a half, this committee has fulfilled a commitment to work past partisanship, securing real solutions for American families. Breaking this tradition is beyond disappointing. It does not set the stage to complete the important work Americans depend upon us to complete. That said, I thank Chair Sanders for today's markup and all of you for your collaboration. I look forward to today's conversation on how to better these reauthorizations. Thank you. I yield. Thank you, Senator.